Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torrin and welcome back to Humankind. So we're starting out looking at our new city of Asur. We could rename this. We could leave it the, the current name if you guys would prefer. Uh, we could also rename it to Kyoto, which was uh, during Edo Japan's time was the home of the emperor. Now, technically, that was actually the capital of Japan, since that's where the emperor was, but the de facto capital was very much in Edo, since that's where the shogun was, and he controlled Japan at the time. Now, the uh, emperor was merely just a figurehead. But we could rename this to Kyoto, or any other name you guys have that you prefer to, to name it, or we can keep it the current name. I'd uh, love to hear your guys' opinion in the comments below. So let's go ahead and start out the episode by adding this area here to Alexandria. I was waiting to do this to see what we we're gonna do with this city, but since we have decided to keep it, we will go ahead and add this one over to Alexandria. There we go, so they've gotten a little bit larger, gotten a higher population here, and new areas that they can work. So more food and production, all that kind of good stuff which they definitely need, because uh, with the introduction of those new pops, they're civilians that just came here, citizens, they're now hurting on food. Okay. Well, we're going to keep them building the uh, the wonder for right now. We'd like to get that done. Uh, let's go ahead and enter turn. And I think we have like seven more turns before we get that wonder. Oh, I keep on clicking through this. The reason why is because we're still waiting on the turn pending here. Uh, but yeah, we've got seven more turns before we finish the construction of our wonder right up here. That'll give us a little fame boost, but won't be enough to get us up into third place because we're about, about a good 700 fame points behind. It's going to take us a while to catch up. This obviously will not be enough. Uh, so let's just go and acknowledge these here and then see what we're being contacted about. Uh, he's looking for a non-aggression pact. Well, let's see here. While... We do now have borders with them. Is that the route that we want to attack? I feel like he's probably less of a threat than she is now. And she's now our enemy. So I think it makes sense to, to sign a non-aggression pact with him. And our armies aren't over here anyways. You know, our armies are way over here and they're all up along here. So I feel like a non-aggression pact would work for us. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and do that. We will agree. Although we could counter and ask for money... I think this is worth it uh, to not have to worry about him attacking us. So we're going to go and accept. My people and you never know. Our former enemies, it's like a, a diplomatic revolution. Our former enemies may become I our new friends, while our former friends have become our enemies. Uh, so she's looking for a non-aggression pact as well. These are the Mayans. And let's see where they're located. They're one of our trade partners. I don't see why we wouldn't want to, to sign one. She's way over here. It's pretty far away. So I don't see any reason not to. So we won't be attacking each other in the seas at the very least. We could counter though, because I don't really care so much about this. And it's not like I'm an ally with her. I doubt she'll pay us. But we could try. Let's see what she says. Something of me, ah, she perhaps. refused it. Okay, not surprising. Uh, she is pleasantly... Uh, she has pleasant feelings towards us. So we need to attack these guys, try and get rid of them. I don't know if they're on the retreat. Yeah, they're on the retreat. Oh, that thing's been lying to us lately, so we've been having to still attack them, or, or still uh, chase them down. So let's do this attack. It's it's obviously a, a very easy one. And uh, they were not able to retreat. Excellent. So they only have one place to deploy. That means we're just going to be attacking them and, and getting them destroyed here. It's two warriors. Uh, we will take this guy back so he can kind of heal up a little bit and instead put somebody else on the front. Put these guys over there, and then maybe get them behind them. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, so let's go ahead and end our deployment. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go. We wanted this guy over here. We want these guys to be next to each other, of course, so they get that bonus. And they likely won't ever get to attack us. I assume we'll be able to get these guys destroyed. We want to attack with our most powerful unit first. But yeah, I assume we'll be able to get these guys destroyed relatively easily. Yeah. Nice victory here. And so now we need to attack the next unit. And they, they were able to retreat. Okay, so now we still gotta chase these guys down. And we also need to see what's down here. Might split this army up since it's overkill chasing them with that whole army. Uh, these guys are also all healed up. And yeah, we don't wanna upgrade them to pikemen right now. We're waiting to get our unique unit. So yeah, let's go ahead and send these guys 
They obviously don't need them down here anymore. So we'll probably send them up to the north. Yeah. Now, we don't want to have all the armies in the north. That's something to consider that we could easily be, like, attacked if we did that. But we could also just give, like... I don't know, just a very basic, like, defensive unit in each of these cities. I don't know who would uh, attack us or cause us any issues, honestly. So we're going to start moving into this territory here. And attempt to reinforce them. And I assume our next war will be against our former ally. That would probably make the most sense for us. Uh, still exploring his territory, trying to find him uh, so that we can... At the very least, get him located on here and be able to talk to him and trade him, trade with him and all that kind of good stuff. We also have an event, I Come Bearing Steam. An inventor engineer, ostracized from her own country on account of her religion, has come to you offering her scientific, scientific expertise. She wishes to settle in the city, city of Cairo, where she believes she could work productively. Her pioneering work on the fundamentals of engines could be vital, but the fact that she is not a follower of Egyptian shamanism could make things difficult. What do you say to her? So we can naturalize her, moving us closer towards progress, which would be the final little bracket there. Any innovator of any creed can become one of our citizens. Cairo is welcome, is ready to welcome her. We'll get learning on three cities for 10 turns. That's plus 20 science. Or we can gel her, moving us closer to home, homeland. Say she's a traitor or worse, a spy. In either case, she, sh she should be imprisoned with maximum fanfare. Increasing stability instead. We're going to naturalize her. You're at the end Get that of science. And now we are at the end well, of the axis. To be said for unswerving dedication to a okay, so yeah, we are dedicated to progress. I don't think anything is, for us, as is, is far over as that. Yeah, not even the homeland is, is that far over. So very much dedicated towards science and progress moving forward. So I want to go ahead and spend our, our uh, money here. I think the people we're trading with the least would be these guys, the English, but they're also the most powerful. Remember, trading with them also gives them benefits. So I think we're going to trade with these guys here since they're the weakest as far as fame goes. So I think it makes most sense to, to trade with them, help them out, I suppose, and not help out the, uh, the people that are more closer in, in fame to us or even beyond us. Uh, these are his archetypes. I don't think we looked at that yet for this character here. His strengths, so science and money, and his bias. He's an Avenger. They will retaliate until extermination of the aggressor. So as far as what we want to get here, I feel like we always want to focus on science where we can. Uh, but that one's probably not as beneficial since it's based on the researchers. So you want like these ones that just give you the flat science bonus since we just don't have as many researchers at this point in the game. It's more beneficial later on when you have like a ton of of researchers. The other option would be like the industrial ones that help quite a bit too and I think we'll do this one the silk. We're not trading for any. I don't know how much it's going to cost. It looks like it's pretty darn expensive. Maybe that's why I didn't trade for it before. I guess we'll just base this on cost then. I'm not trying to pay obscene amounts of money. That's quite a bit. Yeah, let's just go in and get the lead. Despite the fact that, it, you know, getting the science on the researchers is not as beneficial. You do get a lot of stability for these, and it's really cheap. Uh, so that's the main reason why we're getting that. How much was the gold one? That's also 1,200. So let's do... There was one that was cheaper. is the marble. We'll do marble. Let's just open up two more trade routes with them. Increasing the stability in our cities. And I keep trying to hit the space bar to end my turn here. It's not space bar. I don't know if I have a hotkey for that. It might be enter, perhaps. I'm not sure. It's space bar in another game, though. City of science or the den of geeks. Right, so we have 30 research quarters, apparently. It's quite a few. Uh, I don't think the new city we got has any re research quarters. She wasn't focused on that, which is probably why she was behind in tech, why she was sending warriors out at us. It does make really good money. I think it's the third most profitable city that we have. It makes more money than Constantinople and Edo. Uh, but less than Cairo and Alexandria. Of course, Alexandria is our city focused on money, though I think Cairo actually makes more. So what we're going to do is, like, I suppose, chase these guys down. I don't know if the whole army can get them. The whole army could get them. So what we could do is send the horse characters units, I should say, over this way to explore, because they'll be able to make their way back easily enough. Oops, whoa, Jesus Christ craziness going on there guys just want these guys going over here all right so there's still more territory over here we just don't know what or how far this go and what it's all composed of same thing over here 
and that is a part of our territory so we should probably like sell across with these units and, and explore it let's go and take these guys and have them attack this unit uh, we're gonna want to attack from let's see if it matters at all not really yeah it really doesn't matter we will just attack this way and then I believe they shouldn't be able to retreat from us let's do that manual battle don't need to be hanging out in the walls, though of course could do that. Let them attack us, I suppose. That's always an option. Uh, we're going to want the Vringing Guards up on the hills here. Put the uh, Hoplites behind them. They're just not as good anymore. They've just been outclassed by our new units. And I don't think we're going to wait either. We're just going to go kill them. So it doesn't really matter where we placed them, honestly. Yeah, one attack. He did take the most possible damage, but yeah, one attack, we got him destroyed. Now, she's still around because, again, because I don't think she has any cities left, but she still has these units here. She's got four units sitting here. Until those units are destroyed, she will still be in the game because she could go settle anywhere. And remember, all you need is influence to do that. And so I, I assume she'll be able to get an outpost set up somewhere if we don't destroy those units, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm kind of okay about it, I suppose. I don't really care if she's out somewhere else. We weren't really seeking to destroy her. More than anything, we were seeking her territory. We want to take that from her, which we've already done. Surprised we haven't revealed them yet. And you can see that we're losing coastal territory here, and that's because these are cliffs. The cliffs on the coast will not be coastal waters. They'll be ocean waters. And therefore, this ship will have trouble moving through those. Cairo did increase their population. Excellent. And the Aztecs are known as merchants now. And they kind of backed off their aggression a bit. So it seems like. So let's go to continue exploring with the horses. See what's all down here. It looks like that's it. But we're going to go all the way to the edge to just get all this here revealed. And then I suppose we'll have them hop into the water next turn. And head on over to here. I don't think any districts have been built here. No. You just have the administrative center. I will go explore it and see what's going on over there. Uh, with these guys here, I suppose we'll, we'll have them start moving up north. You know, we really need to deal with these units here. I'm not entirely sure where they're going. But remember, we can go out into the sea and then attack them. That's always an option. And by putting our own troops in the sea, we put them at risk. Where, yes, they could beat these guys on their own on the land, but... And they probably won't win in the sea because, you know, they're all transport ships. So they'll have four or five, really. Oh, this isn't even a transport ship. So, yeah, they could uh, definitely defeat us out here. All right, so that's interesting. Okay, so, yeah, if we went out into the sea, this ship here could cause those issues. So we might not want to do that. Let's go move our units over to here for now. Uh, go ahead and continue exploring with these guys here. And I don't know that we're going to go any further than a turn out. So it would just be like right there. And just see what's over there. And then we'll come back. We don't want to have to head back home with that ship to let them repair if they get any damage. Uh, we did finish up the theater here. There's only four more influence, which as we get more and more influence, stuff like this is just not going to be as useful. It just doesn't really generate that much. But it does uh, help. Every little bit helps, I suppose. But eventually, that's just not going to be as worth it. Uh, so, what do we want to get over here? What are, what are their issues? They're good on stability. They can always use more food, though they are producing quite a bit of food. So, we don't have to get this food building just yet. I don't think they even have any harbors. Well, they would have to have a harbor, wouldn't they, for us to be able to get that. I don't see any harbors, though. Oh, here it is. There's the harbor. So, they do have a harbor, so they're getting all this food here. Yeah, we're able to work quite a bit here. And they actually built the harbor next to the market district. Uh, unfortunately, they put it where you can only put one market district next to it, but harbors and, and market districts are, uh, they gel well together. So it's kind of a bummer they built it there, but you know, the AI is not really great in the district placement. It's kind of similar in civilization. They kind of suck with district placement. So the cities you take from them are just never as good as they could be. Well, let's go ahead and get, uh, you know, I think we're gonna get another district here. And which one we're gonna get? I think we're going to go for science. These guys do not produce much science here. I think it makes sense to have a science district. Uh, especially if we can get one that has like good yield. Now we can't build over here just yet. Over here you can see that we're going to get a plus 13. Which is not too shabby. Uh, because they actually have a research district that I didn't know about. They have one right there. So they'd already started kind of making this area into their science district. So we'll just continue with that trend. And go ahead and get another uh, science district there. 
Constantinople, we did get that commons quarter built. Uh, stability should be in a good place next turn. Uh, but you know what? Let me see if we can't get this constructed sooner. That's only going to take off one turn. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Just take off one turn. We'll let Constantinople build something else. And remember, this is our science area, so let's go and continue building science districts. So that's clearly the best location right there, so that's where we're going to build this. Get a plus 17 on that science. And so right now, Constantinople's bringing in 207 science compared to the 239 that Cairo is bringing in. So it's quickly becoming the, the main science district. We'll be there soon with Constantinople. All right, so we have another one of these events. Let's see if it's a good one or a bad one. Uh, looks like it is the bad one. We don't want to do these, so we're going to have to refuse and thus lose stability. I can't get to the refuse because we got all these damn alerts over here. So we're just going to have to refuse it and they'll lose stability for a time. All right, so let's get these guys. I feel like they can probably safely move across. They won't even be able to see us and know that we're down here. But if they do come down, then we're in trouble. Now, because of this one ship, that also means I won't be able to go into the sea and attack them as I was planning. But until they're gone, I feel like we're going to have to stick around here. We'll go here in the harbor and just kind of wait for now. But yeah, they could always come and attack us. They'd have to declare war, of course, but it is her city, so she might, you know, could very well be wanting to get it back. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't explore much there, did we? That would be able to see a little bit further. But we can't see much. Now, as far as population goes, Constantinople is now the second largest of our cities at 19 population. So it has overcome Alexandria. Which is interesting because they just built a unit there as well. Uh, so, so two people have reached the industrial area. So the English, or the former English, I guess they're not even the English anymore. Uh, they're now the Mexicans. Uh, and then, oh, Ghana has come into the early modern era as the Dutch. Okay, so that's our current enemy. She is now the Dutch. So I believe that means she's been too economic focused. Yeah, she's been too economic focused civilizations back to back here yeah see they're still down here we need to get this guy onto the land they could very well come down here and attack us so what we're gonna do is try and stay I guess it doesn't matter if we're here or here does it so we'll just go here let's hope they don't attack us they very well could and destroy these units I was hoping that wouldn't happen but now if we got went into the water I don't think we'd have very high combat strength it looks like you had 36 from four units if we have the same type of transport, which I think we might because it's not like we're very far ahead when it comes to the transport tech. So I think we'd have like 36 combat strength in that sense, in which case we would be able to defeat this one unit, but we would not be able to defeat them, these two together. So as long as they're together, we're not able to compete with them. I guess we'll keep going forward. But yeah, I don't, if there's no, uh, there we go. I was going to say, there's no coastal train here. Except I can't think of too many ways that this meeting turns out well. For so you. we are now these are the Mongols by the way. We're kind of in trouble here now. We're gonna have trouble getting back. Because we are now trespassing. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get this ship back in time, honestly. This was what I was kinda of worried about pushing ahead like this. What we might have to do is go into this coastal territory here, but I remember we're gonna be losing health from from trespassing. It's not something to consider, too. Yeah, we'll just have to keep this guy around here for now. Again, I, I don't know what she's planning on doing here, uh, but I don't like it. we got enough units up here north. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, you know, the war with her, which I assume we would declare war on her. I don't know why we wouldn't. Uh, you can see she's up on the border. She's always going to be a problem here. And it's been our main way of... Uh, expanding getting new population has just been conflict uh, it's been a very conflict heavy campaign as i've said a few times uh so we're not going to replace this we're just going to have to refuse again you typically get the negative ones here unless you're really closely aligned to the other country so she's actually coming with a full-size army now full-size updated army she's got crossbowmen in there she's still got swordsmen though okay so as far as her combat strength goes, we are better than her with both of these armies. So let's just go ahead and go here, you know, let her know she can't, uh, 
she can't come into our territory. I mean, she wouldn't be able to anyway. She doesn't have the trespasser uh, affinity where she can trespass. That's only for the expansionist empires. I would like to get that. I almost want to send one of these horse guys over there to grab that real quick. Uh, but yeah, she cannot enter our territory, so that's something to keep in mind without declaring war. So the fact that she's on our borders makes me think that that might be something she's considering, uh, declaring war. Let's hurry up and get these guys onto the land here so they don't die. They used up all their movement points, of course. And yeah, just gotta keep these guys down here for now. And so we are now taking damage. We're lost at sea. We're also trespassing, so I don't know if it's gonna be worth it yeah, I don't think it's going to be worth it to go in here because you're still losing territory. You're still losing, uh... Hmm. Is all these outposts? Because then we're not trespassing. I think these are all outposts, guys. That's what it looks like. So if they're outposts, then we're not trespassing and we can go in here to lose the Lost at Sea modifier real quick. Although it looks like we're going to be stuck here one more turn, unfortunately. Damn. So we are going to have to go back and repair if we can even make it back gonna be risky why can't they go here oh, okay so that is not an outpost okay so we didn't want to go back that way all right so that's unfortunate we just wasted time I don't know that we're gonna get back in time anyways though I think it we'll be must dead be said that sighting a Norseman in a longship does not always turn out to be a happy event where's the longship I'm not seeing him here that's not a longship there uh, but it does say they're the Norsemen so they can't have, they can't build longships. Now, longships for them are the, the transports. So they transport the uh, the units. And they would like to, to trade with us. They have no resources, so we'd get absolutely no benefit of this besides the fact that they would be, you know, paying us for the resources. But I really don't know that it's worth it when we're just not getting anything unless we do a counter and demand money from them. They're also very close to their territory here. We don't have units down here, so they could attack that way. They're the Norsemen, too, so they might be a bit more aggressive. But I think this character here is not the most aggressive of of uh, characters. He's benevolent, uh, vindictive, an artist, collectionist, and a hipster. Okay, so there's nothing really to indicate that he would not attack us. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to counter. If he wants to trade with us, we need to get some kind of benefit from this since he doesn't have any resources of his own to, to trade to us. So let's counter, and if he wants them, he's got to pay for it, which he refuses to do. So we have finished construction here of that research quarter, and we are starting to lose stability at this point. Let me see if I can shed off a turn here. No, they just don't have enough production uh, for doing that. But maybe if we could shed one turn off, it would be worth it. I guess we'll build our unique district here, the Terra. And, of course, that needs to be constructed where we have mountains or else it's really not producing much it's only producing faith and that's not really an option because we haven't built down this way just yet which is there are only mountains here so actually there would be no point on really building this uh, you're still gonna get two influence but two influence and three faith I don't think is worth the four turns of production honestly so we won't go for that I think what we might do instead is something that gets us in production so let's go and do that since, yeah, they just don't have a lot of production here at the, the 169. So let's go to enter turn again. Uh, we do have money and influence for spending, so we need to take a look at that and see if there's anything we want to get here. And we also finished up the gun gunpowder warfare. Excellent. So we'll be able to, to get some new units before we uh, go to war. So we want to start moving towards centralized power, get our unique unit, unit here. Uh, let's see what the best route to get there would be. I'm thinking probably chivalry. Yeah, we'll go with the chivalry, guys. We get that in three turns. I have we got another offer here. She's wanting the non-aggression pact. Again, we uh, tried countering last time, and she didn't want to pay us. We'll go and accept this time. We do need some friends. She is still in the medieval era. I don't think we talked to them much. They're the, the Mongols now, and they're the ones that are in third place, so right ahead of us, though we are pretty far off from catching up there. So I don't think we're going to help him at all. He doesn't even have anything to trade. Uh, we'll counter and ask for money. And they refused it. Okay, usually they do. Sometimes they, they're willing to do it, but it's a good way to, to not like lose opinion with them. So we're just going to do a little bit of exploring here. Explore all this, and we'll come over this way. I'm not too excited about going back into the sea with these units since these guys are still floating around over here. Frankly, we need a fleet. 
yeah, we have got to get a fleet built. We just don't have a control of our own coastal territory. We just got these wandering around. I thought we'd have to go chase them, but yeah, you don't even have to chase them because they're just standing here. They're not even leaving. They have nowhere to go, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and take the horse unit and put him into the sea and have him come. Oh, he'll have to wait till next turn, but he's going to come over here and grab that, that little uh, special bonus there. It does mean if she was to attack us, declare war on us, then at this point we'd only be slightly more powerful than her, but we do have this army nearby. And of course she still has to declare war on us for any of that to happen. Now we did not upgrade any of our units. Let me see, I think it would be these guys here. All of our archer units, our crossbowmen, and then our unique uh, chariots here can now upgrade to that new unit, but... We haven't capitalized any of uh, our resources just yet, so we're going to have to build that. Frankly, as soon as we finish this, we'll go ahead and uh, prioritize getting those. I don't think any of them are an outpost, so we can't just use influence for it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to produce it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the other location is. Okay, it's right here. So this one is connected to Edo, so Edo can do it as soon as they're done. And they can do, Alexander can do one as well. Uh, those will be our priorities uh, next turn. Uh, let's go and get everything else moved. Get uh, Constantinople building something. Again, we're, we're getting those research quarters right now. Uh, let's see if we can get any more influence with our unique district here while we can build them. And I, I'm not seeing anything good. I mean, you're getting 12 there. That's not shabby. You also get 12 here in this location, which has quite a few districts. And it's not gonna be any better, unfortunately. You can't build right there. It's not an option. Because this is already has, you know, a copy of this unique district. So it's really just here and uh this one here. But you can build either in this location or in this one. I guess we'll do it in this one. Okay. So yeah, just trying to step up our influence gain as always. The next thing we're gonna be doing with influence, I guess, is adding well, we still have three outposts left to add. As far as where we're going to add them, it costs 1624 to add this to Alexandria uh, or to Constantinople. I think it makes more sense to add it to Constantinople. So that would be one option. Uh, they're already at four, while well, Cairo's at five, and Cairo's got to be bigger. So we'll have to add an outpost. And this is probably the most that we're going to be adding uh, is six because it just gets so expensive. You can see we're already at 2182 to attach these, so very, very expensive, guys. Yeah. But I think we're going to do it anyway. So that we can get uh, Cairo up to six. And this would be the last one that does result in us having one outpost that doesn't have a location. So I think, uh, you know, that isn't attached to anything. And so I think it makes sense for this one here. I like the way it looks better added to Cairo. Is that, yeah, I think it would just be too expensive to add both of these to it. You're just spending too much influence, so you got to pick one or the other. And so I think it makes more sense to add this one to this city or this city than it does to add uh, this one to, to that one. So I suppose we'll attach this one to, to Alexandria, or to, excuse me, to, to Cairo. There we go. Beautiful. So Cairo has just grown. Now we are having more troubles with food. In fact, we're going to lose population here because of this. All right, so we won't be able to take care of that until next turn, uh, but they're up to, to 40 population because they did gain all the population from that outpost. And they didn't really get a whole lot of food and production and stuff from this to kind of make up for that. I think it's mostly production. Yeah, mostly production. But yeah, the production's all higher now in Cairo. So it builds stuff faster. So that spent all of our influence. We need to spend the rest of our money as well. Uh, but you get more fame from getting that, that wonder constructed. Look at that. St. Basil's Cathedral has been constructed. It's beautiful. I did lose that population in Cairo, so back down to 39. I think they're still losing food, too. Yeah, it's a problem, but eight turns is when that will take effect. So there's no reason we can't get this improved before then. Uh, three plus food would not fix the issue, because we only have, I think, one harbor here. Yeah, we only have one harbor as of right now, so that's only going to give us three food. And thus, the best way to do this would probably be to get another farmer's quarter. Uh, it's still saying these are the best locations here. 27 food, yeah. That's because you're getting all the food up along this way. Uh, let's see what else we can get in other locations, though. Yeah, just not getting a whole lot over here right now. Uh, let me see in our little food area how much we'd get. 
yeah, this isn't bad. It's not 27. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to continue building up along this uh, river here. So we'll get the 18 there. That'll solve the food issue temporarily. I was going to get these guys come up here and they'll grab that next turn, I suppose. And then these guys, I guess we'll just explore right here. And then um, we'll come over this way and then we'll, we'll have to run all the way back here to go across because it seems they're just staying here. I'm surprised she's not like ransacking us or anything. That'd be very much within the realm of her capability. She could just ransack us and there'd be nothing I could do about it. We're just going to station these guys here for now. Nothing else to do with them. Uh, now that we finish that construction, all these cities that we're working on that will have to get something built. Uh, so let's go and figure out what we want them to do. I think we already decided on, yeah, getting the mine here for the saltpeter. All right, excellent. Uh, that would be more science in this area as well. If we put like a science district here, these would gel really well. So yeah, we're gonna want more science districts over here. So Alexandria, while focused on money, will also be able to get quite a bit of science, I think, just because of their the resources they have. Uh, here in Edo, same thing, uh, except for it's gonna be quicker. One turn to get it. All right, excellent. Uh, we have an event based on a true story. Your achievements are many and your lands beautiful. Since times of antiquity, your people have marveled at the place of great natural grand grandeur. Uh, Edo Japanese within your lands. But few have heard the true and thrilling story behind its discovery until now. A popular playwright in Edo J Japanese, I think there should be more like Edo Japan, has adopted the event for the stage, a saga of exploration and high adventure, replete with dramatic embe embellishments and lavicious, <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce that, lavicious, uh, romance, could be mispronouncing that. Uh, the people are thrilled and you hear it is not half bad. Perhaps you should grace this theater with your own presence and see for yourself. This is one of those weird things because they're cultures, so you know it's Japanese or Chinese or French or whatever, and then it results in it be kind of weird because it refers to the country as that. So it's you're the Japan, you know, you're the country of Japanese rather than the country of Japan. Kind of strange. It doesn't work out well, I think, especially in some of these event texts. Uh, so we can attend it, moving us closer towards progress, and we'll get more science. Uh, the chances of triggering another narrative event or we can pass moving us closer to authority and would get cheaper production of units in cairo i think we're going to do the science we're going to attend reaching the end this of play. an ideology axis isn't extremist and we'll think keep getting this every time success. we move towards Very progress good. now it'll say this here or say one of those and the Teutons now feel different about us they're How quite aggressive you? Whoever. I'm just surprised they haven't attacked us over here. Not sure why they're not. Because, yeah, they could be ransacking this and getting money and stuff. Uh, speaking of this city over here, just gained a population point. Excellent. Also, we just got an agrarian star. And these guys are going to die. I knew that they would because we can't, yeah, they can't get to any coastal territory. So not surprising. So they will die. So that's kind of a shame that we're going to lose our one cog unit since I don't even know that we have the ability to produce those just yet. We got that from uh, one of these little you know, resource locations here. Uh, we did get a curiosity here, so one of these type locations. We got 200 gold from that. Let's go ahead and have the uh, order given for the, the cav to, to rejoin their firm army. And then they're going to come back up here and hopefully avoid her ships. And yeah, just kind of stuck here. We need to build a fleet um, maybe we're going to build some ships here, actually. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Go ahead and build uh, a ship unit. I don't know how well they'll do. Uh, their 28 combat strength against a 23 combat strength unit here. So they should, would be able to beat that unit, but they wouldn't be able to beat this one here. So she could attack us. We'll have to see what happens, guys. Uh, but let's build a ship unit. It'd be better to build them here rather than build them somewhere else and have to move them all the way over here. And let me make sure that is the production area for the units. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the production area. Uh, there's no other, uh, I don't think we have any other ports right now. Any harbors that it could be producing in. So yeah, it's gonna produce right there. You can select where your units, you, as you see here, here's a land unit spawn. You can select where your units and your uh, your, your naval units spawn. Uh, basically anywhere in their territory that's a, a valid location would work. 
So we did finish up the saltpeter mine that allows us to upgrade those troops now that we have a bit of saltpeter. And we're going to go ahead and do the unique district. Always try and do that while we can. If there's good locations, we actually want to build it right there. That's where we'd get the best bonus uh, from mountains. Um, if the, these are mountains, right? Both of these are mountains. It looks like they are both mountains. Yeah. Uh, over here, they're not. So that wouldn't work. I'm just looking to see if there's any other mountains in this city's terrain. You have the mountains here. However, we're limited uh, because we can't build it right there. We'd get the best the best bonus. So basically, there's nowhere to build it. We're going to get like a ton of influence. Seven plus influence is okay. Uh, but it would be better to, to just kind of like slowly build out either that way or up around here. I suppose it would make more sense doing it up around here. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the best way to do it. Uh, what do they need right now? Uh, food's okay. This is going to become a problem here in the future. Uh, so could build... I guess you, what you're building here uh, along this edge is the maker's quarters. So what's the quickest route to get right there? One, two, one, two, three. So yeah, this is the quickest route. So we'll just build this maker's quarters here. We'll get it in two turns. Hopefully we have enough stability to support all those. All right, so I think we're ready to end our turn. No, we're not. We want to spend this money uh, because we have a new tech and can thus upgrade all of the archer units. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's going to improve them up to a 44 combat strength, meaning that they're not as good as the Varangian guards here. Yeah, they're not as good. They're, they're 42 when you don't count the experience level. Well, these guys are 46. Okay, so they're pretty much better than all the other units we have except the Varangian guards. That's what it looks like anyway. So yeah, let's make sure we get all those upgraded. Now, the... Uh, all the musket type troops here, gunners is what they're called here, they will now fight at full combat strength even when defending against close combat attacks. So they're not like the other range units. Uh, however, they do have the uh, requirement for the line of sight. Uh, so, you know, you can't have troops in front of them and then fire them behind them. Uh, so like the crossbowmen. Let's go ahead and get all of them upgraded though. We have two over here. This will be 1940. This is going to be probably all of our money, honestly. Yeah, we're not upgrading to Pikemen. Uh, let's go and get... Where's the troops down here? These guys. Uh, they don't have any ranged units here. Uh, but we do have the one here. We'll wait to upgrade him until he safely gets across the sea. Just in case. Just in case he doesn't make it. Uh, we also have a unit here that can be upgraded. There we go. Beautiful. As so that has increased our overall combat strength, and, warfare, and it looks like she was just wiped out. Codes and practices arise that ideally ensure a fair and honorable society. Okay, so she is gone now, uh, so we no longer need to worry about her. And I'm not entirely totally sure why. I'm thinking, was she taking damage from being in our territory while trespassing? I don't know if she was still expansionist. She might have still been expansionist, though. All right, well, let's close some of these. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how, what, what resulted in their destruction, uh, but this is the the good one. Uh, so this will allow us to boost the seafaring mastery. Um, we can't unlock it because we don't have money. The Metskins are the ones influencing here. So instead, we'll just get the instantaneous 230. That's fine. Uh, that'll be applied to the next thing we research because we just finished a tech. Uh, so let's just acknowledge that, and then we're going to go and get a tech selected. It wouldn't make sense to grab these so that we can get the cogs built, but I really want centralized power next, so unfortunately we're going to have to get that first. Yeah, we're going to have to get that first, guys. So let's go and get the centralized power, and let's get all of our units moving, our cities building. I guess we'll just keep these guys here. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could... I suppose we can go out and explore. I think these guys are the, the regular navigators. Yeah, they're just not going to be able to explore very much. But we're not upgrading anytime soon. But you do have to do that in your own territory. So we'll just keep them here for now until we get the cogs. Although I'm not sure if that's the unit that upgrades to the cog. Yeah, the boarding vessel ones. So yeah, we'll just wait till we get the cogs, which will be like nine turns, maybe less. Because you got the six turns here, and then we'll get the cog uh, tech next. So that does mean we can move these units up or start moving them up. Don't need to keep them down here anymore since they're gone. And I guess the quickest route 
I guess it is by land. Okay, so we'll just have them slowly make their way up here, follow behind this unit. So they have finished the construction of that ship. We won't get any more ships. That's what I was going to build was more ships so we could take those guys out. But since that's been done, we don't have to worry about it anymore. I think we're going to get walls down here. In these southern territories, we really need to get walls since they are so far away from where our armies are going to be at. So we want to make sure they have the best defenses possible. Uh, I mean, you really need to get walls everywhere, but it's just not a priority because we're not too worried about being attacked here. And walls give no benefit if you're not being attacked. And there's really no reason to rush it. Uh, we get six food from that, but we get far more from, from farms. Uh, from stability, we're doing okay. Not doing bad. Uh, is there any more good locations for our unique district? Yes, we have one here. I don't think there's any better in this. Yeah, there's no better in this one. Uh, over here, yeah, this location is not part of our city. I don't think so. Oh, no, no, we just added that one. Oh, but these aren't mountains, so that's why. They're just the cliffs. Okay, so I don't think there's any location better than that one. In fact, this is probably the last mountain location we're going to be able to get. Yeah, because they don't have any mountains in this one. And there's none in this one either. So to get the really good bonus, you kind of got to be close to the mountains here. And thus, uh, we will build this right here. Oh, no, no, right here. I was thinking to get 12 there as well, but that's not the case. So yeah, we'll build it there. Get a nice little bonus. Another uh, influence jump there. And in Constantinople, we just finished getting a Terra. Uh, so let's go ahead and get... Where do we clear the runes? Where do we have runes? Which uh, location? Down here, probably, is what I'm assuming. Did we rebuild this? Right there. Yeah, I guess we'll clear those runes out real quick. It only takes one turn. Let's clear that out so we can get the production there again. I like getting all my my runes cleared out. It's just an eyesore. Which Cairo's trying to get more schools. food. Your biggest worry. Because I think they're currently losing population. I don't know if that farming district, I think it was enough. Uh, the Mayans just reached the, the early modern period with the Poles, so they're Poland. And Alexandria is also losing population due to lack of food. Okay, so we're having some food issues. So with our money here, uh, as soon as we have enough, we'll probably want to get another resource that grants food. Uh, the farmer's quarter is constructed, but that's not going to be a permanent solution. Uh, we're going to need more food. Yeah, we'll definitely need more food. So I think we're going to get another farmer's quarter. And let's just see what the best location would be, though. I do want to continue building up over here, even though I know it's not, you're not getting as much food as you are in other locations. I don't think there's anything over here. Yeah, I think we're going to continue building out here, even if you don't get as much food. Because eventually, you know, they start kind of adding on to each other. And so, like, we get one there, it's going to be worth more. Uh, Ido has finished their construction of their Maker's Quarter. Remember, we are moving over this way, so we're going to get one more Maker's Quarter here. So we get our unique district there, the Terra, with the most influence possible. Uh, Constantinople has finished clearing up those ruins. Is there any other, lo like, Terra locations next to mountains? I don't think so. Now, this is a location that has mountains, but we haven't attached anything. I assume Constantinople will be the one to get this. And if we have the influence, I don't think there's anything else we needed to get. Oh, yes, there's the wonders we wanted to look at. There's one wonder left to get, the palace. Hmm. And we need the fame. But remember, they're getting more and more expensive to get these. And so, like, do we want, you know, to be even more expensive in the next age? I mean, it's going to give us fame, but 100 fame is, is not going to help us that much. We're so far behind. And this is frankly not one of the better ones. It only really helps you when you're producing a shared project. You know, I don't think we're going to get that one, guys. I'm just worried about them getting too expensive for the industrial wonders. Which I'm hoping we're able to get one of those. Now, we do have one civilization that's quickly moving uh, through the ages, which is these guys that are already in the industrial era, and so they always get to snatch up one wonder, and it seems like they always snatch the best one up. But yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and add this to it, and then this will allow us to have better locations here. Uh, and they also get more population, of course. That gives us another expansionist star, so we're going to have four stars up here, and so that ticked our fame up. Still very much in third place, though. We're, we're behind, or fourth place, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, that gives us better locations for building this. Uh, well, not exactly. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't exactly because we don't have a... Uh, we haven't built out this way just yet. 
So what we're going to do is put it right there, which means we need to get something constructed here. Uh, I assume probably a production district because you ate. We'll see what all the options are. Three for food. That's not good. And obviously money would be actually much higher than I thought it would be. 13 for money here. I mean, that's what you're getting the most of. Yeah, you're getting more of that than you are production. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, I guess we'll do the money one. So we'll add that there, and then uh, we'll put our unique district right there. And earning no more money is always helpful. Uh, though you're seeing that we're really starting to step up on the influence and the money gain every turn. Not doing too shabby now. Catching up to where I want to be at. A little bit behind, though. Again, we've kind of been behind in that regard. Alright, so they are going to keep contacting us here, and I just don't see any benefit. So let's just keep on countering. And, you know, that's not asking for a lot of money. I don't really feel like that's unfair. Um, she wants to trade for everything. And we're really friendly with her, but we're still going to have to counter and ask for some money. And she's refused. See, everybody's just really stingy. They don't want to pay for it. Which, most of the time, you know, they'll require you to pay them. Alright, so let's go and bring these guys, I suppose, up to this location. I know we're putting all of our armies in the north. It's certainly risky. But again, I think the key here is just to have one unit to defend each of these locations, and I think we'll be fine. Uh, we could even take this unit here and have him stick around. In, in fact, that might be what we end up doing, uh, turning him into the uh, into one of the gunners there and, and then just having him occupy that location just for defensive purposes. One unit's not going to make a huge difference. If we, you know, have somebody, you know, ravaging us, but in the siege, it would make a good difference. So, uh, they have finished the construction of their walls as well. So that's going to help them. Again, I think it's highly unlikely we'll be attacked down here. If anything, it'd be a rebellion, which then one unit could have trouble with that. And so that's something to consider. But yeah, I think, uh, I think they'll be fine with just one unit. I didn't realize we didn't have this one yet. Uh, let's get the library, the one plus science for population. That's 11 science without losing any stability like you would if you had built a, a research quarter. We got that maker's quarter done here. Excellent. So now we can go ahead and build this here for the 12 influence and the 3 plus faith. We should be producing pretty good faith now. And thus maybe we might be able to get to the next tenant before they're all gone. I guess we'll just have to see. Glad we were able to get them wiped out. We don't have to worry about them anymore. And I hope everybody has come to appreciate our power. So, so we completely building. wiped out our enemies. And so yeah, people are just going to keep on contacting us. And so we're just going to keep on countering and demanding that they give us money if they uh, want to trade for our goodies. All right, excellent. So, oh, we have gotten the ability to upgrade the knights as well, so we need to do that. And then I guess we'll declare war. Uh, we could wait till we get this next tech. I suppose we would, so we would want to, to go ahead and upgrade our hoplites as well. So really just getting all of our guys upgraded so that we'll have a clear techno te technological advantage in this war. So let's get these horsemen upgraded because, yeah, they've just been, they haven't been performing very well for us. They've been kind of our more weaker unit in these battles. Uh, and even with the knights, they're still going to be a bit weaker than all of our other units, apparently. Yeah, they're still going to be the weakest unit that we have. But they have the speed, so they do have that benefit. Uh, yeah, so let's just go and get all the knights upgraded that we can, that we have the money for. Uh, also, Alexandria is done constructing the Terra. Was that the last good Terra location? I want to say it was right there. Yeah, I don't think there's any other good locations for this. We're going to get enough influence to really justify the stability loss, I feel. Yeah, so we won't get any more of those for Alexandria here. But they have plenty of stuff to build. Good God. Yeah, look at all this stuff they need. Uh, food should probably be the priority here. So let's go ahead and get a, another farmer's quarter. And saying this is the best location at plus 16. I think it's because this is our only river. Yeah, that's like the only river. All right, so that's what we'll do with the farmer's quarter there. Could have built a harbor too. That might have produced more food, but we'll, we'll do the farmer's quarter. That'll also let us get another uh, farmer. And again, we can claim that one wonder, uh, but, it, but I don't think we're going to, guys. Again, I, th I think uh, I'd prefer to have the industrial wonders be cheaper. So maybe we can grab two of those because those ones are a little bit better. So I'd like to get two of them. Uh, let's go ahead and, and do these. Uh, we don't have the money, unfortunately, so we'll just have to boost research. But we might be able to get this in one more turn since we do have two of these that I saw. Because yeah, there's one over here as well in Edo. 
So let's do that, and yes, we did. We did knock off an entire turn there. All right, excellent. So that worked out well for us. And that's one of the, the advantages of having somebody influence in your civilization is sometimes you can get good stuff from it if you're more closely aligned with their, their ideology. Uh, so speaking of influence, we actually want to go ahead and use this again. Uh, now this, of course, as you guys already know, uh, helps tick us you know, more in you know, our culture, uh, have more influence here over our territory. So before, I think this was flip-flop, like 53% against us and 47% for us. And we made a little jump there because of using this last time, but it also gives influence. Not very much, though. But we do get a little, a little influence boost. We're going to, again, want to use it in the place where we have the least amount of influence, which would looks like it's here. Yeah. That's why we keep getting those events there. They have a 100% hold on it, the Metzgans do. So let's go and do it here. And again, we should have got a little shot of, of influence when we did that. And then these guys here, what we're going to want to do is have one of them move to protect the city. And we, we got to get them both upgraded as well. And then the uh, horse guy will continue to move up. I think we sent that army over this way. Somewhere over here. So we'll get them moving over there. And we'll be invading with two armies, both those locations. We're just going to, to skip the turn here since I want to get them upgraded and I don't want to forget about them. And they finished up with their terror location there. Just moving through these, these districts fairly quickly. These guys aren't doing bad getting the districts built. Uh, we're going to do the library here. That's 17 more science points. Uh, finish the library here. Let's see what we want to get next. It's probably going to be a district, guys. Yeah. And we'll probably do... I mean, they're producing more science here now than they are money. Let me see what we could get for science. 13 is the most here. How about money? Uh, 21. Okay, we'll do 21 then. Yeah. Get that 21 money. Fate of the free cities. So we got a new civic here available to us. The world as it ever was is divided into the rulers and the ruled. Great sprawling empires and proud independent cities. Your struggle is with other empires, but you should not forget the part these free cities can play. Let's go and show the details there. And it's only one available, right? Yeah, just this one here. Independent peoples. How should we use other peoples? As mercenary armies, why let our own blood be spilled when we can pay others to fight? Moving us closer towards world, and thus losing that kind of strength and gaining some stability. And we'll have a cheaper cost on hiring those independent people's mercenaries, which we almost never do. And you won't see very many independent, independent peoples as we move further in the ages here. So I don't think that's the, uh, the best route to go. Uh, it's pr very clearly probably this one. Assimilated peoples is going to move us closer to homeland, the route we want to stay in. And uh, gives us a 50% reduction on assimilation costs. Not that that's going to help us much. Uh, but yeah, we'll just do this one. I mean, I guess you're really not getting any bonus for it. So you're kind of just wasting influence. Because this doesn't help us unless we're assimilating. And we're in our, our current field right now. So you know what? Let's not waste the influence. Not when there's other things we could be building and getting. Uh, that is, in fact, going to have to be the end of today's episode. Next episode, we'll probably be declaring war on her. I want to keep wanting to call her Ghana. She's not Ghana anymore. She's the Dutch. So we're going to declare war on the Dutch next episode, uh, if we can get everybody upgraded. Uh, we got to have enough money. Uh, I want to get all of the army fully upgraded. So that means over here you need to get the two Spartan units or the two uh, Hoplite units. You need to get those upgraded. That's only... Oh, you know what? We don't have the tech yet. Uh, but yeah, we need to get those upgraded once we have the tech. So we'll have our new unique unit in the war. Over here, you have two of those as well to get upgraded and a horseman. We need a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of money, guys. Uh, also, I'm seeing that we could go here real quick, and I think that's what we're going to have this horse guy do. He's going to come over there and grab that for us. I keep forgetting that that was there. They'll just continue advancing up here, but we also have to upgrade them as well. So frankly, we do need to uh, get a quite a few units upgraded before we start the war. I don't know if we're going to be able to do all of those. Uh, we just won't have the money. So we might not wait to get them all upgraded, but at the very least, we need to get our unique units. Yeah, I, I don't see why we wouldn't want to get those units. They're so much more powerful uh, than what we're getting, than what we have here. Uh, just taking a look at their combat strength. They're at 46 combat strength compared to, what is it, like 30-something? Yeah, and that's with with the experience. So it's 30 
without the experience. So we're talking about 16 plus combat strength. I mean, that's huge. Uh, so I feel like you have to get these guys upgraded. And there are unique units. Why would we not want to use them in this war? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wait until we have enough money to get all those upgraded. And that'll probably be several turns away, so we'll have continued peace. I don't know if the war will happen next episode. If it does, it wouldn't be until the end. It might not be until the video after that. That gives us time to just kind of focus on building up, uh, just building up our empire, continue constructing things, uh, continue adding these outposts to our cities, because uh, we actually have every outpost added to the city with the exception of this one here. Uh, there are some islands that are their own separate uh, territories, which we could add. I just don't know that it's worth it. Like this one here, there's really nothing there to warrant that. Same thing here. I'm just not sure it's, it's worth adding. I mean, maybe if it's enough to get you a star. Uh, we're actually about to get another builder star, just one more district constructed and we get that. As far as other stars go, to try and get into the next era because we, as you can see, we're already behind. So yeah, if we wanted to continue with that, we'd likely get this in the next war. So that would be one star. We're, we're catching up on influence. Not on gold. Still pretty hard, far behind on gold. Uh, the tech ones, we'll definitely get one more of these. And so just these two stars here would get us up to six. And then we also know that we're about to get the one for the district. So that'd be three uh, total for seven. So yeah, very soon, I think. Yeah, very, very soon. We could even move into the next air if we wanted to. Or we could stay in this one for a little bit longer to try and get more stars. But uh, one bonus of, of getting ahead is, of course, we get... A wide variety of cultures to pick between and we can try and get those next wonders which i'm kind of excited about getting but you can see that we're, we're very much behind guys so staying in this age for more stars would be a legitimate uh way to go as well uh, but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode if you did make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe to our channel hit that notification bell and leave a comment uh, remember looking for some uh name suggestions on this what you want to do here do you want to name it kyoto you want to keep it named a sir uh, or uh, a different name if you'd prefer so looking for some, some suggestions in regards to the name here of our recently conquered city. Uh, so do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.